You can pay as attention as you want, but your program will probably have some cases in which it doesn't work. Today we'll see how to look for potential problems inside our programs. Debugging is the process of identifying and removing errors from computer software. The first strategy, which is really common in other programming languages and we can also apply to Lisp, is to put print everywhere in the code. In particular, I want to pay attention to a specific feature of print. It returns whatever you pass in as parameter. For example, if we wanted to print n in this case, we would have to introduce a progn and first we print n and then we also return n in this branch, not to change the behavior of our function. But we don't have to because print n also returned the value of n. So when we are here, we just have to write the print and wrap the n. We can see that it printed all the times that we passed for a value of n, which is less or equal than one. When we write code in a functional style, our function will be a single expression. This is the reason why this feature of print is useful. With the trace function, we can see every time some specific function are called, with which parameter and what is the return value. For example, we want to trace fib. We just have to call trace with the name of the function. If we call trace without parameters, we get the list of currently traced functions. Let's try to call fib again. We can see that to call fib of 5, we called fib of 4 and fib of 3 and so on for all the others. When we are finished with tracing, we can use the function untrace to make it stop tracing our function. And next time that we call fib, the trace is not shown. We still have the print of n, but now we can see that only the result was printed. Trace is like some automatic print in strategic positions. Then we have break that allows us to put a breakpoint in the code. For example, I can put a breakpoint at the beginning of fib. When we run our software, it will stop as soon as it will reach our break. And at this point, we will have a REPL. We can see that we get a REPL similar to when an error occurs. In the backtrace, we can see all the functions that have been called. And if I press continue, with zero, we can see that the code goes on. Fib of five called Fib of four, which calls Fib of three. At each stage of backtrace, we can inspect the local and global variable. Pressing enter, I can see that currently the only uh, local variable is n equals to three. We can press V to view the source code we are currently in. We can step between form using S. The problem is that by default, SBCL optimizes a lot the code. During the debugging, it's useful to set the debug level for optimization. To do this, we stop the debugger, pressing Q. We add the declaration in which we set optimize to debug. We compile again the function and we start it. We can see that uh, while we step, I am pressing S, we get uh, more details on which form got evaluated. Pressing E, 
we can evaluate a form in the current frame, in the current context of the function. For example, n, I can see, that is equal to 2. It is interesting that break is an expression, so it's really simple to introduce conditional break. Just put it inside a branch like when. For example, I could have noticed that uh, my function behave uh, in a strange way when n is small. So I put the break only when n is less than 3. Then even if I call fib with 10, the execution went on until we reached fib evaluated on 2. Inspect is one of the best way to explore the state of our objects. Sure, you can print the values you are interested in, but what if you could have a visual representation of the internals of your objects? For example, I define a class rectangle with two slots and then we make an object of rectangle base 10 and height 5 let's evaluate it in the REPL then I click on the object and press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, Tab if there were some nested structure I could dig into all of them every time an error occurs we get a shell that allows us to view and inspect the state at that point. This is usually sufficient to understand what's wrong in our program. If you cannot, you can trace or break into the code. More advanced techniques exist, but they require more deep understanding of the condition system. So, they will be a topic for a future video. For today, this is all. Let me know in the comments if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe.